best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. And uh, first of all, thank you for listening. This question I'm about to get to is from one of the earliest interviews I did on this site. And it's, uh, I, I don't know, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I would like to go back and do it again. I need to do it again. Uh, but it, it's a little bit of nostalgia here for me. But it's a good question talking about Hollywood, talking about comics, and kind of this dynamic between the two. And, and you know, like like a lot of you do, we're, we're searching for answers. Um, you know, the thing that I really like about a lot of the people who write in and the questions that we talk about and all this kind of stuff is that it's people trying to come to an understanding, trying to get answers. It is not, uh, for a period of time, I, I would get a lot of mail, and there's still you know, a decent amount of it in the comments of, Comics is just doomed. Doomed. It's never coming back. It's dead forever. So why do we even try? In fact, I get this. Some people get like passionately angry uh, about me asking questions like, why are you trying? The fact that you're trying, I'm angry because you're trying to make sense of it all. That's a, it's a, it's a weird take. Um, but let me get to this question because it, like I said, it's a little bit of nostalgia. It says, hey, Perch, I recently listened to you with Brian Edward Hill from a while ago like two years ago, two and a half years ago, I think. Um, and I was a little bit annoyed when he said it was easier to get into Hollywood than comics. Annoyed at comics, I mean. It seems dumb to me that an industry that doesn't even pay people well would have such high standards for entry that a Hollywood screenwriter was like, Jesus, this is tough. It felt like someone saying, I worked at Gordon Ramsay's restaurant and barely managed to get work at McDonald's. Not that I'm saying comics are the McDonald's of entertainment. You know what I mean. I do. You, you make a great point, and I think that's a great analogy. And for those of you, um, if you want to go back and you listen to that interview, uh, Brian Edward Hill is obviously a guy who has worked in Hollywood, has done screenwriting, and, of course, done comics as well. And I've enjoyed his comics. I think he writes good books, uh, particularly I think the Killmonger uh, stuff he did was was excellent. I liked his Vertigo. In the in the Vertigo relaunch, I think his Vertigo series was the only one I particularly enjoyed. Um, I was one of the few who liked the Fallen Angel series as part of the X-Men uh, relaunch. I thought it was really good, and I, I liked him a great deal. I, I think he does good work. I think he's, um, I, I think he's a good writer. Um, it's not for everyone. Everybody has different standards and different tastes and everything else, but I think Brian Edward Hill is a really solid guy, and, and I think he, he, did, he did well. Um, for a while, I was worried, uh, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, he did his first uh, X book, and then he did no more. It was just that one, I think six issues, and he was gone. And I, I thought he was setting up some really good things, and he came on my channel early, you know, very, very early when that series was getting going. And I wondered, did coming out, because that X office is, is strange, and it is weird, and did coming on my show get him kind of booted out of there? I heard later, no, that had nothing to do with it, and I was thinking too highly of myself, which is true. Uh, but it, uh, it, I, it was one of those moments where I worried a little bit. Did I cause harm to him uh, in some way? Because I, I think he's a really good guy, and I, I would like to see more of his work. And, and I'm a little surprised because he does do pretty dynamic stuff. Um, again, the, the Fallen Angels series, a lot of people didn't seem to enjoy that one. Um, and it was one of his lower things, but like, go read his Killmonger. Um, it was, it was pretty, pretty damn solid. Anyway, I, it, the, the mail continues. I've often felt comics biggest weakness is that it doesn't seek out new talent. Well, isn't that the industry's biggest weakness that it's an ex so exclusive. It feels like a country club. Most, uh, in comics felt like middle-class humanities, <laughs> humanities teachers who would be happier working in the HR department than writing. I like people like Hill and Dixon or Priest because they feel more worldly and thoughtful. I respected Hill saying that he tried to understand why someone had moved alt-right before writing American Carnage, something 95% of comic writers would never do. We need more Brian Edward Hills, but how do you get that if comics are so exclusive? So we've heard this story repeat um, from a couple of other writers and people who I've done interviews with on this show. I've certainly heard this story a lot outside. Uh, you've heard Jeff Thorne talk about this. Of course, there's another guy who does uh, screenwriting and does comics. You've heard uh, Joe Casey say this. Uh, you've heard Kari Andrews say this, uh, just kind of this odd mix. Um, first, the practicality, you know, just to be you know, clear uh, with everything, um, there are more opportunities to do screenwriting than comics in the sense that 
Uh, screenwriting has, you know, the, you, you can do pilots, you can do pitches. There's, there's more pe- there's more incoming opportunities for Hollywood than comics, except, um, certainly you can always go make your own comics. You can always do it for yourself. And then there's no barrier of entry. You're just doing it on your own. But if you want to go work for Marvel or DC, you've got a fairly limited of number of people to go pitch to. And, uh, you have a severely disorganized cluster of a company where they don't even handle the pitch. They don't handle any of this stuff well at all. And so, you know, there's there, yeah, there are more opportunities in Hollywood surely by, you know, more people, more availability, more things being asked for. Uh, that's sort of pathetic, but that is, that, that's the, uh, the boring part of the answer. Um, the, the less boring part of the answer and, and probably more frustrating like you, I get really annoyed with that statement. Not that it, isn't true because I, I believe that it is. I mean, I've heard it from enough people that suggested it's it's very true. Uh, but I get annoyed that it, it, it's it's an easily solvable problem. The biggest challenge with comics, in my opinion, is that there is there is not. I think you have two things that work in tandem to create this best. Number one, there's no true reward for success, which means because it goes long, it's two sides of the same coin. There's no true punishment for failure. Right now, if you're an editorial, you're you're managing these comic lines. If you get a hit on your hands, it doesn't really change the trajectory of your career at all inside the company. Now, certainly it might for the creators. You know, they can sell more books and everything else. But for the editorial and all the rest, there's, there's not. People who have been, uh, especially in the last two years, people have been hired and people have been promoted, make no sense. I mean, legitimately, it makes no, like, look at some of the people that have gotten changes in their careers and you wonder, like, how, how this, it's certainly not because of sales or because of talent. The people are producing the most revenue for the companies are not getting rewarded. It's, it's a, it's a weird mix. So that's one problem. The second problem is there really is no oversight. And and here's an area where, um, you know, a lot of the, the customers have done it to themselves and I'll, I'll give you this. You're, you're not going to like that that statement, but if you go back in time, if you have a long memory, and it, it has, so happens that I do, uh, there there were a lot of talk about how you know editorial interference was a bad idea, and you need to give creators just the freedom to do what they're going to do, and that was a big thing from the customers. And and what was going on in a lot of people's heads is they were thinking about the image revolution. They were thinking about uh, things like. Uh, you know, people telling Todd McFarlane what to do and making terrible decisions. Bob Harris kind of ruining the X line and other things at Marvel. They they were thinking about that. So they're like, yeah, we need to get the creative vision intact. Today in uh, 2022, it's funny how many people have the opposite. Like, we need more. We need more editorial control. We need more mandates. We need Jim Shooter back. We need those control freak back. 20 years ago, that was not what everybody was saying. Even 10 years ago, that wasn't what everybody was saying. But now. It you know I think it's flipped entirely and we need that. Um, but what's what we live in a world in now is it's very easy for an editor to put their attention toward a project, the thing they like. It's very easy for them to hire friends and to hire people within their network without a lot of oversight. There really isn't any HR control or any you know anybody looking over the shoulder to say, hey, let's make sure your hiring practices are actually fair. Here's the weirdest part, by the way, and I, I mean. I, I stand by what I'm about to say. So many YouTube videos, so many people rail against diversity and inclusion initiatives. However, if you took an actual, you know, no emotion, diversity and inclusion initiative, and you said, all right, HR is going to come in, and we're going to make sure we're hiring to quotas, and we're going to make sure we're hiring a proper mix, and blah, 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 all the rest. You know what I think you'd, what would happen? I'm serious, by the way. I think you'd honestly get more white guy writers <laughs> That if they fully establish that plot program, I think you'd get, um, I think you, I think you'd get a more diverse. When I say diverse, I mean of opinions, of backgrounds than we have now. Because what's happening now is the editors are going and they're they're calling up their friends and they're talking to, and you know a creator gets you know, close to an editor and then the creator brings in their three friends that they worked in the same comic shop with, and so you've got a tiny tiny little pool of comic creators coming from the exact same place, not fully vetted, many not ready for prime time, either with writing skill or just meeting their deadlines and doing something unique. Editorial's not really paying attention, and there's probably some dynamic where, oh, they hired in their friends, so can they really 
criticize or tell them to change something, it's their friend that might ruin the friendship. And that's more important. Friends are more important than comics. And I think that it's, it's, if anything, <laughs> like I saw somebody doing a video about, um, God, who was it? It was one of the big companies. I think it was like Home Depot. And Home Depot had a um, critical race theory, diversity, inclusion, training program, and everything else. And it's like, we need to have these strict controls about who's getting hired, and nobody can get hired who's a friend of somebody else. And as I'm reading that, I'm like, man, they should implement this in the comic industry. It would actually, <laughs> it would actually result in a much healthier mix than what we have now, which is, is really no controls and easiest answer possible in a lot of cases. Now, I want to be clear. There are some editors, certainly, who work hard. In fact, in, in a lot of cases, you have some editors who are radically overworked because they care about their job and they're trying to do the right thing. And then you have other editors who are dramatically underworked. They are doing a lot less. They are, uh, again, hiring their friends and not doing a good job vetting kind of who's coming in the door and everything else. You have, you know, you have kind of two, two worlds there. And, and so, you know, it, when I say you know, there's problems here, yeah, there are people doing the job well. Uh, but there's also plenty of people who aren't. And in this crazy, weird way, the the problem with comics right now is in order to get in, the most surefire way to get in is not through talent, and it's not through hard work. It is through knowing the right people. It's through networking. And that's not exclusive to comics. That's certainly true in lots of other jobs. But it's extremely true in comics. If you have the right connections, if you're friends with the right people, and this is why you see so many creators uh, being very, very cautious about who they're liking and retweeting and friends with and all the rest, because they know that if they haven't been established yet, their likely best way in is to suck up to, you know, eight to 10 people. And then that's, you know, they, they'll, they'll find their way in. And if they go in and they do a poor job, there isn't really any consequences to that. Because there's not any consequences for success either. You can do, you, I mean, that's the most tragic part to me is there are people who are killing themselves to put out strong books and really try to do a good job, taking on project management type activities to get something really going. And those are the unsung heroes of comics. And we, we don't hear enough about them because I'm not sure, you know, it, it, in the short term, it doesn't matter. Now, here's the good news. Um, I do believe everything turns around. And if you look at the people who've had careers for a long period of time, it does, you know, the, the, the quality and the success and the professionalism does eventually rise to the top, just far slower than it should. And the problem is a lot of people who are, you know, successful are, uh, you know, self-disciplined and can do all these things. They quickly find out that there's more, you know, easier opportunities, less nonsense, and often more money in Hollywood. And so they just go there. They just start doing that work. A lot of people working in comics are, are there because they love comics. The challenge is, you know, you do need more than love. You actually need to have some training. You need to have some skill. You need to have, you know, you need to have this. <laughs> you can't just want it. You actually have to be good at it, too. You got to do both. And if you've got an industry that really doesn't push people to do their best, I mean, that you wind up in, I think, a pretty bad place. Anyway, uh, it's a good question. I miss, uh, I miss the, the, that interview with Brian Edward Hill was great. And I, I will reach out to him again, see if he can get back on again and see how he's doing because uh, he is a good quality writer. Um, lots of writers are. Uh, but yeah, it's, it is easier to get into Hollywood than comics. That seems pretty broken to me. Anyway, thanks for the mail. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.